The hardest part of writing the Klingon Dictionary, the Klingon Dictionary, as you know, is two parts. It's the yeah. description of the grammar. It's a sketch. It's not complete, but a description of the grammar. And there's a whole bunch of words. English Klingon, Klingon English, or German Klingon, Klingon German, yeah. but whatever. Um, and when I wrote the dictionary, you'd think that writing the grammar part would be the hard part, explaining all the different things. That was relatively easy. The hard part was figuring out what words to put in the dictionary, other than the words that I made up for the film. Because the dictionary came out right after Star Trek, actually well, it was written during, or just during, I guess during post-production of Star Trek Three. So all the words that I made up for Star Trek Three, whether they ended up in the movie or not, uh, that was the basis of the dictionary part of the dictionary. But there weren't all that many, really. So I said, I need more words than that. Mm -hmm. So what other words am I going to put in there? And I said, I can't put in words for everything because I'm not going to make a book like this. So I thought about it. I said, okay, I'm going to put in Star Trek-related things. So I went back to the original episodes because Next Generation hadn't come around yet and looked at all the episodes that had Klingons in them mm -hmm. and pulled words out of that and put those in the dictionary. And that still wasn't enough. And I said, what else? What else can it be? So I just made up, just arbitrarily, for no reason at all, made up, you, you made up a word for this, that, and the other thing. But that was really hard because there's everything in the world. So I put certain restrictions on myself. And one of them was, no, I'm not going to make, other than words that were in the movie, or that were made up for the movie, I'm not going to make up any words that have anything to do with Klingon culture or Klingon uh, geography. And the reason for that is I'm not a story writer, but I'm a screenwriter or TV writer. So I didn't want to make up words for something, then have a story or a movie or a TV show come along that contradicted that. I figured we'll do it the other way around. Let them make up the idea or the concept, and I'll tell them what it's called. That was the original plan. I've changed my mind about that since then, and I've made up things that do have to do with, with Klingon culture and so on and so forth. Well, what happened is after doing all that, uh, once again, other than words that were needed for the movies that came later, or the TV shows that came later, uh, people wanted to know, how do you say this? How do people at the Capcom, how do you say this? How do you say this? So I you know, started to make up more words. And that's where it became both fun and hard. And, um, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask, because, because you, 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 give, you find new words very often. So... How do you start creating a word? Do you just say, okay, I, I take this, or do you think about it? How long does it take? It, it, well, sometimes it takes no time at all. Sometimes it takes a very long time. Um, the, the, I take a very conservative approach. And what I mean by that is if someone says, how do you say, the first thing I'll do is see if there's something already there yes, that, I can, that I can make use of rather than making up something new. Yeah. Many people ask for words, and they don't know what words already exist. Right. It's true. Right. Um, or I can expand the meaning of something a little bit, rather than make up a whole new word. Now but the... if I have to make up a whole new word, I say, all right, what should it be? Uh, the, well, there's the grammatical aspect of it, but that's the easy part. The hard part is, what is it going to sound like? Because mm -hmm. it could be anything. I mean, there's only so many sounds, only so many syllables, but given that, there's lots of possibilities. So then I start to try to get an idea of something, and they come from all different, all different sources, all, all different sources. Uh, sometimes I'll think of a word um, uh, in another language and try to build a Klingon word based on that, but not in an obvious way. Uh, not because I want people to recognize that it came from Greek or something or other, but because I just have to, have to start with something, I have to, to go somewhere. Uh, Sometimes I'll think of some thing or some person connected to that word mm -hmm. and use that person's name as the start yes. to build it. If, yeah, in that sense, yeah, my, in that sense, my favorite word is auge. Auge? Auge. We know what auge means, but explain it anyway. Auge <laughs> means root beer. Yes. I, it could mean other kinds of drinks too, but it means root beer. And the reason I like it is because the, the, the word, the joke, depends on Klingon grammar. 
Yes. Okay, because as you know, the, the word for and. Yes. Okay, in Klingon comes after the two things. So yeah. you don't say A and B, you say A, B, and. And the word for and is je. So the word for root beer has an apostrophe on either side, like it's in quotes. Yes. And then it's ao, A, W, je, which means A and W, which is the name of a big root beer company in the U.S. Yeah. People in Europe don't know it, but right. they will do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. My name is Levin Litar. I'm your Klingon teacher from Germany, and I'm proud to be here together with... I'm Marco Krend. Proud to be here as well. <laughs>